Alrighty, I'm gonna do a quick video and walk around on this acquisition here. This is a 1983 240D uh, Mercedes Benz sunroof diesel engine, four cylinder, four speed manual transmission. Um, I wanted one of these cars, I've wanted one for a long time. Um, I, I wanted to find one that was in good preserved condition, that didn't have any body issues and didn't leak and the rubber seals were still in pretty good shape. Um, didn't have any rust issues. That was a four speed. Well that didn't happen. Instead I got this car which has issues in all of those compartments. Um, I found the car. It had been driven daily up until about two years ago or so the girl had had it for nine years and basically had been parked under heavy oak trees pine trees cypress trees and pretty much abused um, in that way rain abused sun abused tree abused neglect abused car um, and first when I first saw it and really started looking at the issues it had I rejected it pretty much out of hand but then started up and I drove it and thought well it's just too nice a car to just let go and my odds of finding another one with a manual shifter um, didn't seem too good uh, the first drive of it really wasn't too impressive it was it was the engine was cold for one thing and these things don't like don't give the best driving experience when the engines are cold. They want to be warmed up. And it had a problem, obviously, some sort of issue with fuel flow. I mean, the motor seemed to be willing and wanting to go, but there was something that was keeping the gas going from going at the pressure it was supposed to be at the injection pump. You could just kind of tell that from driving it. Um, so I made her an offer, and she accepted it, and I got it. And the first thing I did on it was the tires on it were dry rotted. I got new tires. Um... And then we'll go ahead and give you a walk around and show you kind of what we got here. Uh, it's got body damage there. It's got another kind of identical little mishap there, not as bad. And a dent here. And all those seem fixable. I think I can hand pound those out. They're not too bad. The paint, it's okay. I mean, there's some spots of it that are missing. Um, but it's not bad. It doesn't look terrible when it's cleaned up. It's been raining. We've been in an epic rain event here. Um, the front bumper, that, that piece was totally coming off and there was no saving of it. That rubber piece that goes on there, I couldn't figure out how to make it stay down. I mean, it just didn't, it, it just seemed so deteriorated. It just wasn't going to take the shape it wanted to. Um, but I think I'm going to fix that trim there with some wood. Same with this piece. It had popped off in that accident there. It's right on one of the holes. And um, I may be able to save that piece. I still have it. It's not too bad. Uh, I'm, once the fender is the right profile, that piece may, and I may straighten it, it may be able to go back on there. So there's that. We'll do a little walk around the back. Other than those three little dirt areas, I got a little piece of trim nick right there. It, it's not too bad. The body's not too bad. Trunk leaks as well. You see there's water in it. Um, first thing I found when I got the car home is that all of these water channels all over the car were completely filled with tree stuff to the point where they were actually the tree stuff the leaves and all had their own kind of ecosystem going in there where their insects were in it turning it all into dirt um, the worst areas were and which was part of what allowed the water to flow, flow freely in the car as it sat there um, it was it would get wet I mean any kind of water on the car it would end up inside the car um, the area now I'll pop the hood in a minute the areas here where the water channels are were pounds and pounds of dirt and what I found is that just cleaning it all all that up one time has not been adequate because as the car as stuff is removed and then the car is driven the air forces will blow more stuff out that you couldn't get to and didn't know was there into these rain channels and I think we, I even have some more little juniper berries or something that you can see that have blown out and are now building back up into that track right there so I have had to go occasionally and re clean all these channels uh, blowing it with air vacuuming in it long screwdriver pulling the stuff out my pocket knife running along that edge and popping those juniper berries out I've just had to do it you know repeatedly uh, one thing I did find though is once these water channels started to be relieved the 
ecosystem that was in them, then it stopped leaking so bad inside unless it was being driven. And I'm still having a problem uh, where water comes in pretty bad when it's driven. Um, let me show you the interior seats are, you know, okay. It's got a little tear there. Back seat's not too bad. And that area back there is, it's okay. The lid's missing off the first aid box and the first aid gets missing. The wood is all there except for that one piece right there is missing. The rest of it is savable. Um, the radio, it's original, very expensive Becker cassette, expensive option on this car. Um, it didn't work at all. She, the girl said it had worked until very recently and then didn't work at all. I took it out, opened it up, hit it with contact cleaner everywhere as good as I could, put it back in and I found now out of AM, FM, cassette, I have AM. And I'm getting like only two channels on AM. There's not that much AM around here anyway. Um, and my, you know, this has got an issue. The power antenna doesn't work anymore. Matter of fact, it's not hooked up anymore to the battery because the girl said it would continue to run, try to retract, the motor would stay running and it would drain the battery down overnight so they've disconnected it. And it's not all the way extended and it, it doesn't move at all. And it's got a little bend to it, but I think it's savable. I, that's just another, another deal I might have to get into. Um, this, like I said, was all filled with crap, which has helped break down. The seal doesn't look bad on this trunk, trunk, but it doesn't keep the water out either. Um, trunk of lid's pretty good. Good spare and all in there. Original tire change and stuff. Let me pop the hood on it, show you under the hood, then we'll start it. Uh, the electric sunroof on this car does work. Closes, it has a little bit of a issue with this flapper right here when you close it. Uh, but it does work on the track. And you need it because the air conditioner does not work. But it did come with AC. This is basically the uh, European and African taxi model uh, with the manual tranny and the oil cooler, uh, heavy duty oil cooler and all. Uh, but it does have a couple options. The radio it had air conditioning and it had sunroof, which probably most of those that were bought as cabs didn't have. Motor's pretty clean. Uh, I've done fuel changes, um, oil. I've done the filter for the fuel. I've done both of those. And that seemed to help the performance quite a bit. I've done a little cleaning on it. Still got some more to do. Um, get that cleaned up. The air cleaner looked like it had just been replaced. It didn't have any dirt on it. It had a little bit of rust on it. Um, it had a new battery that she had just put in there. It was an expensive battery. Um, this is going to be really hard to get out of there. I need, and I need to, I've got miracle paint on the or, on order and uh, it's going to be hard to get that bat, big old battery out of there to, but I'm going to have to take it out and restore the pan, battery pan. It doesn't seem too bad it's holding up but I can see just parts with it. I can see it's got a little surface rust that needs to be fixed. But not too bad under under here. I mean, not a lot of rust. Here's the areas that I was first talking about where you really, really have to clean over and over and over again and get these cleaned out. Um, and I'll be going to poke around more on this car today with the the air compressor blower and blow some, try to blow some more stuff out of there once it dries a little bit out. Um, let me go ahead and uh, start it. Let me show you the start here. Oh, one thing I want to say, the main, what I found, the that gave me the biggest improvement in performance on this and it is driving really good now when it's warmed up I mean it has good power good drivability uh, the shifter bushing, bushings of course need to be replaced it doesn't shift too bad once you get used to it um, but yeah, there's a little wobbliness there and the, the linkage bushings and all and they're cheap parts and, and you know it's not hard restoration so um, we'll be doing that here fairly soon uh, the big thing I found let me walk over here I'll show you that was robbing power from this car was this hose right here that goes from that fuel line into the top of the main filter this is the original one and what it looked like and you can see how deformed it is and how blown out it is um, so it it's a much larger diameter than it originally was just because it's weakened so much and taken that set so it was just not allowing enough pressure buildup um, 
to run in through the filter and then hit the, the injection pump. Um, I was that was big big power robber. As soon as I did that, it was amazing difference putting that normal. I saw that I'm like, oh, that's messed up, and that's gonna blow anyway. It's hard as a rock, um, but that one change uh, just was amazing. Doubled the power of the car. The other weird thing is when the girl had bought it, some guy had been running vegetable oil directly into the tank and had a homemade heater, just a copper coil that went over the filter and then was teed into the heater core and apparently he ran it that way and, uh, you know, with some success until the tank started to grow he wasn't filtering the vegetable oil very good and the tank started to grow nastiness and that plugged up the fuel system so when she got it it had those issues and she immediately had to have the tank cleaned out uh and all the entire fuel system cleaned to get all that crap out of her and then after that she said it ran fine and but the, all that stuff was still there that coil and all when i got it and i got rid of that and replaced some of the heater um core hosing and all that that uh, where it had been cut it just replaced it with some more um, need to really go in and do do all the rubber parts but most of them look pretty good except for that that one I found there that piece that had failed but you know my upper and lower hoses look okay um, these recirculation hoses look look okay they're not great but good enough for now well let me go ahead and start it and make this video run too long the uh Dash control throttle adjustment works on this car. Low plugs work. cycle on this car I think it has some carbon buildup when I first got it it seemed like the light would only stay on just for a few seconds I mean it would start okay but it's been summer here in Florida I mean it's 100 degrees most time when I'm starting it uh, but now that I've been doing it starting it and driving it more and more uh, it seems like the cycle comes on and stays on for a normal amount of time and the, the glow plugs are heating the engine up pretty good but uh, that's something this winter I'll probably have to address uh, this does have a block here that wire is broken down but it does have a block here uh so that's it so the next uh, video i'll do i'll do a, get somebody in the passenger and do a driving video on it uh show it going down the road but uh thanks for watching i'll give you some updates to show you some stuff as i make some improvements on this car uh the saw saying have a nice day